you ever seen an ITX board with four standard size RAM slots and 12 SATA ports? No, of course you haven't. But we're going to take a look at the ASRock C2750D4i. Alright, so this is a motherboard that is maybe a little different. Let me explain. So this is based on the Intel Aviton C2750 8-core processor. What that means is this ITX motherboard comes with a processor. Now, technically this is an Atom processor. Intel builds it as an Atom but this is not your grandfather's Atom CPU. I would describe pretty much all Atom CPUs as sort of gimped out of the gate, but that hasn't been my experience with this board. This board with the Aviton processor, this eight core version, keeps up quite handily with a Xeon uh, 1230 V3 in benchmarks and the testing that, that we're, we're doing. Now, obviously the Xeon 1230 V3 is gonna be faster for some things, but this board for real world performance, file transfers, uh, having it be a file server and things like that, you know, tit for tat, it pretty much keeps up with the Xeon 1230 V3, which is the Haswell version of the Xeon processor. But with this ASRock board, the C2750D4i, the processor is soldered on and it's underneath that heat sink, so passive cooling. Now, the other thing about this board is it has four RAM slots. It supports error correcting memory, which is very important if you're going to run FreeNAS or something like that that's server grade. This whole board is server grade, but we'll get more into that in a minute. Um, it supports up to 64 gigabytes of RAM. Now, right now on Arc, on the Intel Arc, the, you know, the ITX, other ITX server boards that have, you know, like Socket 1150, those on Arc say that they only support up to 32 gigabytes of RAM. This thing supports up to 64 gigabytes of RAM and you've got four slots to do it in. So if you want to run a crazy amount of RAM and you want to run FreeNAS, this is the board for you or any, pretty much any home server or light duty server as this is also well supported with Windows Home Server and Windows Server and things like that. But more about that in a minute. I mentioned it before, but I'll say it again. It does ECC memory. It's the unbuffered error correcting memory. It supports up to 64 gigabytes. That is of course DDR3, 1613 are supported, 1.5 volts, 1.35 volts, that's fine. The Intel C2750 has two um, SATA 6 gigabit per second ports and four SATA 2 3 gigabit per second ports. This board also has two Marvell controllers, one SE9172, uh, that's two um, SATA 6 ports, and then one Marvell SE9230, that's four um, SATA 3 6 gigabit per second ports. It has two Intel i210, which supports Wake on LAN, power efficiency, it can do the dual LAN teaming, has PXE. For the uh, base band management controller, we've got a separate video on that. Hopefully we'll remember to put the link on the video. If not, just Google ASRock IPMI. I'm sure that our video will come up first. Uh, that's powered by the Realtek RTL 8211E. Now the IPMI function can also share with the built-in Intel port. So if you don't want to you know, connect the IPMI on a dedicated port to a de dedicated switch, you can share it with the LAN. That's how I set it up in the test configuration. Um, it's got a built-in A-Speed AST2300 uh, VGA adapter with 16 megabytes of, of RAM that supports up to 1920 by 1200. So it's it's great for a server platform. You don't have to put a video card in. It's just the, uh, it's basically a crap built-in video card, but that's all you really need on a on a platform like this. Um, it's got a, a chassis intrusion switch. So if you're going to put this in a fancy case that will let you know if somebody's taking it apart, you know that's fine. You got six four-pin fan headers. Um, you've got one USB 2 header, um, which will support one port. It, you can do two internal ports, but you have to move some jumpers around. But just know that it's only got a total of three USB 2 ports. So um, it's a 64 megabit AM to AMI UEFI um, BIOS, you know, plug and play, the whole nine yards. It's got CPU temperature sensing, and you can actually get a graph of that from the IPMI interface. Um, motherboard temperature sensing and voltage monitoring and all kinds of server grade stuff. Now there's official support in terms of software for Windows Server 08 R2, Server 2012, those are X64 edition, so it is 64 bit. The CPU also has VTD extensions so you can do virtualization. It does not have VTX, so you, if you have a hardware controller or you wanna pass through one of those Marvell controllers to a virtual machine running like VMware ESXi, that's not going to work for you on this platform, but you can virtualize with it. That's completely supported by the uh, by the processor and the platform. So on the Linux side of the software, you've also got Red Hat Enterprise, CentOS, SUSE, FreeBSD 9.1, uh, Fedora Core, Ubuntu, and ESXi 5.1. Now, right now, the SE9230 and the SE9171 controller 
is not supported on VMware because they're not enterprise enough. But you can get them working with the community drivers. So if you enable the community drivers for ESXi, you can actually get it to work. Now, I will also tell you that I tested this thing extensively with FreeNAS and it worked great. Now that was uh, 9.2, I believe. Um, it was super rock solid, stable. I did all kinds of crazy stuff, terabytes and terabytes of reads, writes. I did bad things like pulling a, a disk pool and using an SSD for cache, like the ZIL cache and pulling that. And I also had a malfunctioning power supply that uh, has a bad five volt rail. And so the five volt rail will just drop out. And so I ran it with this thing and it totally locked the machine up but when I got into the IPMI, in the IPMI logs, it said, well, hey, guy, the, the five volts don't, totally dropped out. I don't know what happened, but the five volts was gone, and, and here's a log of it. So I thought that was really, really impressive. So let's take a look at the board. The layout on this board is a little interesting. At the back of the board, you've got a serial port and VGA, two USB, and three network ports and a button that is like the which computer is this button. You push it and it blinks. It's not really a big deal. The two built-in network ports are Intel uh, I210 based, and the other one is for dedicated IPMI. That one's Realtek. You can't access that one from the operating system. There's a separate video on IPMI, but IPMI lets you remote into the computer, even when it's off, as long as it's getting standby power, and see diagnostic information and other stats and things like that for the board. So at the back, it's pretty Spartan. But it's really meant to be, you know, a small server platform, file server, something like that. So moving around, um, you've got these six SATA connectors. Four are SATA uh, 3, 6 gen, 6 gigabit per second. And the other two are SATA 2. And then you've got all these other little connectors, which are for, uh, like, managed power supplies and the SM bus and things like that that, that most of you guys won't really need to worry about. Then you've got a PCI by 8 expansion slot you get some connectors for usb there's a one extra usb port that you can get at by header well there's jumpers that let you control whether or not you want two usb ports on the back panel or you want two usb ports on a header but let's just say that this thing's got three usb 2.0 ports i would have liked to, to have seen it if they included usb 3 coming around then you've got your six SATA 6 ports that are provided by the Atom chipset. And then you've got your four DIMM slots. This is really the best thing about this motherboard is you've got four regular size DIMM slots. So if you want a powerful machine that you can put a ton of memory in and you're not using notebook memory or anything like that, that is a really, really strong feature of this. And then you've got the CPU under the big heatsink, which is passively cooled. So not only is the Intel Atom very low power, it also doesn't really put out much heat. Now in our demo system, we're using a Fractal Node 304. It's a very, very slow fan. It's very, you know, it's got good airflow, but it's very quiet. And this worked brilliantly with that. Um, you've also got a ton of fan connectors. There's four fan connectors at the front here alone, which is, you know, kind of awesome. Then you get two more uh, by the six SATA connectors on the bottom of the board. So in terms of cooling, like for running fans and things like that, you've got a lot of options in terms of what this board provides. And then you've got your ATX power connector. Now this thing uses so little power that it doesn't have the auxiliary ATX 12 volt connector. So you gotta be careful here because some power supplies, this uses so little power that some power supplies have trouble knowing that this machine is even on. So make sure that you get a power supply that's on the approved list or a power supply that can handle very low uh, current. I'm using this with uh, four hard drives in our test system, and it's a 305 watt power supply. And at the wall, I'm not even drawing 100 watts most of the time. This board, because it comes with a CPU and is relatively inexpensive, there's this is the octa core that we're looking at. There's also a four core version of this board that's a little cheaper. Uh, the four core version for most people would, would probably be completely fine. But with FreeNAS, with this eight core version, I was able to copy. Uh, uh, files over SMB at the full 100 megabyte per second plus that you can get on a gigabit network. No bogging down. I was also ate with Plex Media Server. I was also able to stream a transcoded vid video file at 1080p to four different tablets. And the CPU utilization was quite high, but the uh, playback was, uh, was stutter free. It was completely fine. This is definitely worth a look if you want a home server that you can set it and forget it but also has enterprise level features to give you advanced warning of hey i've got hardware problems or hey i've got power supply problems or you know hey i'm having problems with this that or the other through the ipmi if it's not booted up you can remote into it and say why aren't you booted up or are you having problems 
So I really, really think this platform is worth a look for um, not just the enterprise market that it's targeted at, but also this, this could be your next home server. So this is gonna get a thumbs up. In terms of complaints or shortcomings, there's not really a lot to complain about on this board. I think it might be nice if there were more USB ports. I mean, you've only got a total of three usable ports. I think there's another port or two that's lurking there somewhere that's probably connected to the IPMI system. But um, it would be nice to have USB 3 because a lot of the other standalone NAS units, like, you know, you get a standalone NAS, they have at least one USB 3 port that you can plug an external hard drive into and it'll be fast. With this, with USB 2, if you're going to use the USB for an external hard drive to mirror your NAS onto for like offsite backup or whatever, there wouldn't really be a use case for that. Although you do have the PCI Express by 8 expansion slot, so you could put a USB 3 card in there or a multi IO card or anything like that and be completely fine. Um, the other thing is that for the IPMI feature, I think a lot of you probably won't use that feature even though it is cool as heck. But uh, to save money, I would it would be nice if there was a version of this board where they just didn't solder the IPMI function on the board. That would be a fast, easy way to deliver this amazing platform at a little bit cheaper price point for a particular market that maybe has not yet been considered. But don't let that turn you off. The IPMI really is an awesome, awesome feature. I mean, it will totally save your bacon one day. But, you know, it's hopefully it's a thing that you rarely, if ever, need. But if you're in an apartment or somewhere that you don't have a lot of space, you don't have to hook up a monitor, keyboard, and mouse to this. Literally, the IPMI is a remote keyboard, monitor, and mouse. Check out the video because uh, this thing will also record and save video of, like, when it crashes. And then you can play back the video later. So the IPMI is a pretty cool feature, especially if you're in a small apartment, like a city apartment or something like that, and you want a powerful media server. I mean, the Node 304, you could stick in some unused corner of your apartment. You wouldn't even know it's there. It's quiet. Don't even need a keyboard, mouse, and monitor for it. You can just remote into it, even when you're doing the operating system install, and it'll work fine. I really like it. I like it so much that I'm going to use it at home. So, until next time. Mm -hmm.